Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. My name is Silky Feather, and you can call me Silky. This is actually Nikki B. This is my real hair color. This is me. I am not hiding underneath anything today. And I figured if I am wearing a wig that, um, if I'm wearing a wig and I'm in a disguise, I could be Silky Feather. And if I look like this, I could be me. That being said, um, Kevin has an update, but I want to talk to you about bonfire.com backslash Silky Feathers, that's apostrophe S, Silky Feathers Nest. And I have a little store there, and I have some t-shirts. I have a lot that say, like, different sayings, um, funny sayings, sarcastic sayings. This is one that I have designed there, and it says my name. And this is another one, and their fabric is to die for. It's so soft. This is the double feather. And I got three X's because I like to use them as a nightgown. But um, they're really cute. And I made some face masks, one for a woman and one for a guy. All the proceeds, 100%. I have 95% in one part of that. But 100% of all the donations that I receive or purchases, that money goes to the homeless. And anyone who has been put in that position with this COVID. So, um, and I have uh, one in dedication to the John Lewis from the Senate. Um, it has a fist in the air and it says getting into good trouble on it. Or get into good trouble. One of the two. Uh, that's that. Let's take a listen to meet Kevin. I hope my audio is working better. Oh, and because I'm, I know I'm loud. And then when he plays, he's not as loud. And I'm just confused. Here with the stimulus update for August the 27th. We have updates from Meadows, Pelosi, 1 million new jobless claims, and a big heads up from the Fed. Quick note, this video is sponsored by Life Insurance. You can get in as little as five minutes and two free stocks with Weeble. That promotion does end at the end of the month. So deposit $100, they give you two free stocks. Nancy Pelosi and Mark Meadows are expected to have a phone call today at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And just minutes ago, Nancy Pelosi finished her press conference prior to this call. She first complained, and then this, I'm not taking sides here, I'm just saying what she said. She first complained about Trump ignoring science about COVID making this pandemic worse. She says that the new Postmaster General is also just the president's henchman trying to hurt mail-in voting. Nancy Pelosi says she's committed to meeting the public's needs, and so are Democrats. And to do that, we need more money and more spending to follow science and fight this pandemic and provide the support where we need it. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Mark Meadows and the phone call coming up. At one point, I don't know if she was serious or she, if she pretended to do this, she asked who they were talking about. And somebody had to remind her that they were talking about Mark Meadows and then basically said, oh, well, Mnuchin's the lead negotiator anyway. I'm like, um, hello? Shouldn't it be like your job to know that Mark Meadows is the one who's been trying to make deals here and you're acting like you don't even know he exists? That's not very good. That's not very good at all. Uh, it doesn't matter what side you're on. That, it doesn't come across as good. Now, she was directly asked about the phone call coming up, and she said, look, the phone call could be a very short conversation. We need enough money to support testing, tracing, treatment, and we need state and local government funding. It could be a very short call if they're not ready to bring more money to the table. Now, this is going a little bit back on what she said a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, she said she'd be willing to wait on state and local government funding until January when there's potentially a new administration and a new Congress. Then she went on to say that we just don't have shared values between Republicans and Democrats, and their number, that is Democrats' number, the two and a half to two trillion dollars, is defensible for evictions, for food, for doing good for this pandemic, and more. She says she's willing to meet in the middle, and we won't budge. They have to move, she says. And she complains that Republicans are willing to give two trillion dollars over the next ten years to the richest one percent via tax cuts, but when it comes to helping the people, they're coming in with an eyedropper. She 
Pelosi's press conference. Now, don't tell anyone I said this, but here's my opinion. It's really difficult to negotiate with Nancy Pelosi. And it's not even just the fact that she won't move off the $2 trillion or $2.5 trillion, but the fact that she, she either pretended to or doesn't take the care to respond to Mark Meadows is just not a good signal for the country. It's not what you should do. You should be doing anything you can to have more conversations, not less. And it's not good to start a call with, which I'm assuming might happen, you ready to give us more money? Well, not exactly. Click. That's kind of what she's implying here, and I don't know if this is just tough posturing for the public, but it, I don't think it looks good. See, here's the thing. The country, our country, has elected the Republicans who are in power and the Democrats who are not in power. And the mixture we have is what we've got to deal with. So the fact of the matter is, the people decided the mixture that we have right now. Democrats in control of the House, Republicans in control of the Senate and the White House. And so I think both sides have to realize that hardlining isn't going to work. You can hardline when you control everything. If Democrats sweep and they win the presidency, the House, and the Senate, they can hardline all they want because they have all the power. But when you don't have the power, you have to negotiate and do what's right for the country or, or you know, for this pandemic. Like, gosh, for the pandemic, like, how hard is this? See, in my opinion, it's the responsibility of both sides to accept that they're going to have compromises, whether that's a one and a half trillion dollar deal, or one point two trillion dollar deal, or one point eight trillion dollar deal. Nobody cares. Just get something done now. So frustrating. On unemployment, we hit another one million jobless claims for the week ending August twenty second. This is slightly down from last week, but we're now at twenty two weeks out of twenty three weeks of this pandemic, where jobless claims have exceeded one million claims. If we add that all together, that now means we've had 58 million jobless filings in this country. That's about a third of our labor force. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, four states have now received their $300 boost, Arizona, Missouri, Texas, and Tennessee. And all states are in the application process, except South Dakota, who says they will not even apply. Wisconsin, North Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, Kansas, and D.C., who have yet to apply. The Federal Reserve gave us a massive update this morning. Stay tuned for a big video update where I break down everything that the Federal Reserve said this morning and what it means for us in terms of real estate, stocks, investments, and our money going forward. Okay, it's a big shift. Thank you so much. Yeah, 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 we all know it's big. They all say it's big. So it comes right down to it. <sighs> yeah. Big on odor. Big on making muscles. That's what that is. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. And if you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Like, subscribe, and share. I really, really, really need subscribers, guys. We're only at 200 and change. And I gotta get up there so I can do some live videos. <sighs> 